Hello, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. We're so pleased that you've chosen to spend some time with us today. My name is Jim Grove, a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the Center, and I greet you with Namaste. Namaste is Sanskrit, and it stands for the divinity in me recognizes and honors the divinity in you. Each Sunday, we recite our Declaration of Intention as a spiritual center. The words from our website can now be seen on your screen. I invite you to recite this aloud with me now. We are a spiritual center that honors all paths to God. Ours is a positive message, inspiring our possibilities and offering spiritual tools for transforming our lives and helping to make the world a better place. Here, we can find peace of mind, belonging to a spiritual home, and a personal relationship with the God of our understanding. We are here to discover what we already know. And now, as we move into our time of prayer and meditation, I invite you to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and just continue to focus on your breathing in this present moment. Now, Bob Teasdale will sing the chant, I am opening by Christy Snow. Please join in if you're comfortable.
we are opening our hearts are ready to receive we are opening we are opening our hearts are ready to receive we are We are opening our hearts are ready to
Neither the will of God nor the nature of God can change. Reality is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Everyone's real nature is spiritual and is of God. Though my real self is changeless, I live in a changing world. I am reassured in knowing that something permanent, substantial, and eternal stands in the midst of my being and watches with joy the eternal unfoldment taking place. To spirit, changes are merely variations of experience. Spirit is never caught, bound, or tied, and I, being an expression of spirit, am never limited by the world of experience. Negative experiences may seem to exist for a brief moment, but beauty, like truth, exists forever. All unlike God in my life ceases to exist when confronted with the divine reality of my being. I live in the changeless reality of God. I am not disturbed by the passage of time or the variations of experience which I go through. The divine acting in, through, and around me is changeless in its manifestation of good, and I rest secure in the knowledge that as changes occur in my life, they are always changes for the better. I give great thanks that good alone endures. As I release this word of truth, I am confident that is reflected back to me in all my experiences. And so it is. Today, our spiritual leader, Reverend Karen Wolfson, is speaking on change, what's next. But before we hear Reverend Karen's timely message, I'm pleased to welcome back Bob Teasdale as our today's soloist. This morning, Bob is singing one of his own songs, Change Your Mind. Welcome, Bob. Change is the kicker. Change is the key. We don't know what's coming tomorrow, so we hang on to what used to be. But the world is always moving Nothing stays the same So let's hold on to what's inside Cause only love remains Now some say change is a bad thing But it's all in what you see Cause if you look at life in a different way A change can set you free Cause if you change your mind You can change if you change your mind, you can change your world. If you change your mind, you can change your world. If you change your mind, you can change your world. The change is coming, is coming to you and me. A new day is dawning for all the world to see. People living together in perfect harmony. Lifting their voices in songs of love and peace. Now you might think I'm crazy, but we all see what we believe. And since I turned my mind around, a change has set me free. Cause if you change your mind, you can change your world. If you change your mind, you can change your world. If you change your mind, you can change your world. If you change your mind, you can change. Change your mind, 
change your world, change your mind, change your world. If you change your mind, you can change your world. If you change your mind, you can change your world. If you change your mind, you can change. Change, you can change your world. Thank you, Bob, for yet another of your original creations. Change your thinking. And I love the lines that say, change is the kicker, but change is the key. It's a great framework for my message today. But first, let's all check in. Hi, everyone. You've been in my thoughts this week, as you are every week. And I do feel our connection. It's so good to know you're out there. And you know, what really helps is the emails, the photos, and even the videos that you send of your gardens, your cooking, yourselves, your pets, your grandchildren. Keep them coming. I love hearing from you. Even if it's just a short note, letting me know how you're doing. I'll write you back. And speaking of staying in touch, last Sunday's virtual Zoom coffee and chat, well, that was really fun. There were about 15 of us and we were very informal and relaxed and we just chatted and caught up with how, how uh, our community members are doing and, uh, and just shared information and we all agreed, let's do this again. And we are going to, first Sunday of October. So stay tuned and you'll get more information. I do hope you will plan to join us for the next coffee and chat with Zoom. And if you're watching us on Facebook Live, we enjoy your letting us know where you are. And of course the comments that you put Put in the uh, in the feed there we love that and to you our financial contributors thank you thank you you are a vital part of the team that makes it possible for us to share our message our caring our connection to stay in community as we're doing each Sunday and even during the week and thank you all for joining with us today you know as I think of you during the week Remember, I continue to see you as vibrantly healthy and abundantly supported in every way. So now here we are in September, a time when the seasons change, at least in some parts of the country. Some of you I know are up north enjoying the changing colors. I grew up in Minnesota and I remember the vivid, beautiful colors of mother nature as the trees, leaves changed in the fall but and of course we know those of us in Florida the change of seasons is oh so subtle but at this time of year because it is a time of seasonal change it brings me to thinking about life's process of change and you know since mid-march our experience has been a constant change and in the midst of all this do you find yourself often asking What's next? Well, that's my title today. The first, uh, first part of a two-part series on change. It's change, what's next? And you know, when we're in the midst of so much change and upheaval, life just doesn't seem to make any sense. And it's not that life doesn't make any sense. It's just that life doesn't always make sense the way you and I were expecting it to. So in that case, what do we do? Well, when life doesn't make sense, we make up a story. Brene Brown wrote, we humans are hardwired to immediately make up a story about what's next. And it can often be a scary story. During these past several months, amidst all the uncertainty, the unexpected and the unknowns of this pandemic, I wonder what pandemic stories have you been making up or listening to. 
And you know, they don't have to be necessarily scary stories. We can make up any kind of story. But back to the idea of change. You know, the truth is life is always in change. The process of change is the only constant in life. What do they say? The only constant is change. Now, some of those change, changes we welcome, and in fact, some we initiate. And some of them we resist, we dread, just like Bob's song, Change is the Kicker. But remember, his song also went on to say, change is the key. See, change isn't something meant to work your last good nerve. Roger Teal, Dr. Roger Teal of the Mile High Center for Spiritual Living expressed it this way. He said, change is the mask that transformation wears. Hmm. So what's going on in the midst of change is actually transformation? Wow. What's next? Transformation. Another way of saying this is that change is really life's creative process, nudging us forward to grow and have a great time while we're doing it. So in that context, the question, what's next, evokes a whole different story. So my new title today might be, what's next? Transformation. So thinking about that, let's consider three things about change and the looming question, what's next? Number one, today we have sponge cake. Yep, you heard me. Today we have sponge cake. Bob's song, had these words that said, you could say change is a bad thing, but it's all in what you see. Because if you look at life in a different way, a change can set you free. Well, Dr. Rachel Naomi Remen, one of the best known of the early pioneers of holistic and integrative medicine, tells the story about her grandmother who grew up in very hard times, often having very little to eat. And so during those difficult times, her grandmother tended to stock her pantry and her ice box, remember ice boxes, stock them to the brim. So much so that if you were careless in how you opened her ice box, an egg might, to your horror, fall out and crack on the floor. Well, Dr. Remen remembers that her grandmother's response to these accidents was always the same. Grandmother would look at that broken egg with satisfaction and she'd say, aha, today we have sponge cake. <laughs> this story about broken eggs being transformed into sponge cakes came back to Dr. Remen when she was, as a teen, diagnosed with severe, chronic, and lifelong Crohn's disease. Talk about a what's next moment. She was, of course, shaken by this, but her mother's matter-of-fact response was just like her grandmother's. Rachel, we make a sponge cake. And Dr. Remen reports that her mother's reminder of her grandmother's response to those broken eggs transformed her sense of how to move forward with this dire diagnosis. The point is, when facing change and wondering what's next, pay attention to the story you're making up about it. Don't just stop at broken eggs, make sponge cake. You know, during this pandemic, like it or not, have you noticed we've had a lot of cracked eggs? But we've been making delicious sponge cake too, each in our own way, admittedly, not without some grumbling. For example, we've been tapping our inner creativity for new ways to do what needs to be done. We've been allowing ourselves to appreciate the restorative quality of more at home time. We found new ways for maintaining connections with friends and family and appreciated these so much more. The storyline is up to us. Broken eggs or sponge cake or red velvet, or chocolate, or coconut, <laughs> whatever's your pleasure. Now, number two, 
is this, we don't know what we don't know. During this time of pandemic, that is so true. From the anxiety of change and then to the exhilaration of transformation, as Dr. Teal called it, in that space between, there's so much we don't know. And that, my friends, is actually the good news. Deepak Chopra called this the field of pure potential. And he says that when standing at the edge of the unknown, it is the richest place to be because that is the edge of pure potential. That is the place where anything is possible. I love that Bible passage that affirms that. It says, in God, all things are possible. In God, by whatever whatever is the God of your understanding, whatever you want to re, re, uh, re, name, however you want to refer to it, whatever you want to call it, or de, how you want to describe it. I like the way Deepak Chopra said it, and I believe he's referring to God. The source of all creation is pure potentiality, seeking expression from the unmanifest to the manifest, from the invisible to the visible. <clears throat> and so in view of that, when facing change instead of, oh no, what's next? We can proclaim, what's next? Bring it. Ernest Holmes, the architect of our philosophy, assured us, it makes no difference where or how things originate. Nothing can hinder the divine flow. And speaking of not knowing, there's a beautiful song by Daniel Namod that says, I don't need to know because God knows. I love that. What it's saying is, I don't know, but I do know the one who does know. Thomas Troward, who was an early New Thought teacher and writer, wrote about it this way. He said, we are dealing with the infinite and this infinite intelligence can draw together the means requisite for its purpose, even from the ends of the world. I don't know, but I do know the one who does know. And standing here at the edge of all possibility, I will add, prepare to be surprised. This reminds me of dear brother David Stendhal Rust, who often says, another word for God is surprise. Now, number three, what's falling apart just might be coming together. That's right. What's falling apart just might be coming together. It must, it has to. I recently heard an interview with Deepak Chopra in which he said that Everything in nature, everything in you and me, has one reversible, irreversible impulse toward homeostasis, toward balance, toward harmonious functions. This means toward a reestablishment of innate wholeness, whether it's in nature, whether it is in you and me. That is the underlying template no matter what the appearances. And these months of pandemic have been so chaotic, it's hard to see anything cohesive and good emerging. So let's not make ourselves crazy trying to figure that one out just yet. Mark Nepo, the author, wrote that while struggling with the pain of change, it is often impossible to see the new self we are becoming. And Steve Jobs, near the end of his life, wrote this. He said, you cannot connect the dots of your life looking forward. You can only connect them looking backward. So trust that the dots will connect. And have you noticed, as you look back over your life, each of your life experiences, each dot, has been a stepping stone preparing you for the next one. Yesterday, as I was driving along, ruminating about this very thing, about what's next, I saw something out of the corner of my eye 
I saw a person wearing a bright red t-shirt and on it was this, trust the process. <laughs> trust the process. I take that to mean trust that those dots will connect. And by the way, things may seem to be falling apart, but we don't have to fall apart. You are a creation of the infinite out of itself. And there is, is in you as you that which is infinite, indestructible, no matter what. Ernest Holmes said it this way. He said, I know that the changeless abides within me. I am calm and peaceful in the midst of confusion. Infinite peace is at the center of my being. I know that nothing disturbs my soul. In view of that, what's next? Bring it on. And now to musically sum all of this up, Bob is going to sing a song for us. It's by Eddie Watkins Jr. It'll send us into our week walking with the Spirit. Enjoy, and I'll see you soon. I'm going, going in spirit. 
Thank you, Reverend Karen, for that inspirational message about change. And Bob, for the wonderful music complimenting Reverend Karen's message. Now it's time for our offering. We're so grateful for your generous financial support of this center that allows us to continue bringing you opportunities for virtual community, connection, and support. There are three easy ways to share your offering. On your screen, you'll see our website, which is www.cslsarasota.com, where you can choose a couple of options. You can select the Donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal or by credit card. Or you can mail a check to our address, shown there on our website. You can also set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. And now I invite you to place your hand over your heart as you reflect on your gift, blessing it as you share it. And know this with me. My gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper. And the divine flow returns it to me, multiplied abundantly. Now please join me in reading our offering affirmation together. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. And while we're showing you our website, I'd like to draw your attention to the green prayer request button. We invite you to use this feature to send us your request for prayer support. We have four licensed spiritual practitioners, Kathleen Frankert, Ron Frost, Jaron Nelson, and me, who are available to know and affirm spiritual truth with and for you in whatever challenge you may be experiencing. Here on our website, you can also sign up to receive our weekly e email newsletter. Please also check out our Facebook page for posts about upcoming events and like us. I have a couple of announcements for you this morning. First, Mark your calendars for the first Sunday of each month through December for coffee and chat time at 11 a.m. after the Sunday service. Those of you who participated on September 6th know what a warm and wonderful time it was to reconnect with each other virtually through Zoom from wherever you were. Our next coffee and chat will be on October 4th. I sure miss you and look forward to seeing all of you. More information can be found in the weekly email newsletter or on our website. And have you been catching the pop-up prayers conducted each week on Facebook by spiritual practitioner Jaron Nelson? It's a wonderful five to 10 minute break from the day to treat yourself to an inspirational reading and prayer on a different topic each week. I highly recommend it. And you can search through past prayers to find any and all that speak to you. Also, just a reminder that our Spiritual Living Circle meets via Zoom every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. I facilitate this one-hour faith lift where we discuss an article from the current month's Science of Mind magazine. All are welcome to attend. If you would like to participate, please email me at the address shown on your screen, and I'll send you the conference invitation along with this week's article and discussion guide. So now, as we conclude this sacred time together, let us move forward into our day and the week ahead, ready for whatever comes next. Now I invite you to listen or join in singing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Thank you for being with us and have a great week, everyone. breath 
I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternal.